Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history, also known as African American History Month. The brainchild of this month is none other than Carter G. Woodson, who dedicated his life to educating African Americans about the achievements and contribution of their ancestors. Since 1976, every U.S. president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month. Other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also devote a month to celebrating Black history. The remainder of this month will be dedicated to DIYs representing the work of Africans or African Americans. This week, we're looking at art and jewelry. Jacob Lawrence was born in New Jersey in 1918. At just 23 years old, he completed his migration series. This colorful collection of paintings tell the story of the Great Migration, a mass exodus of over 6 million African Americans fleeing the segregated South to urbanized areas across the country. Imagined as avant-garde shapes and rendered in bright tones, this work is celebrated as much for its subject matter as its Harlem-inspired aesthetic. Lawrence work is a landmark in the history of modern art and a key example of the way that history painting was radically reimagined in the modern era. My first art piece is African-inspired and is painted on cloth and it appears to be modern or contemporary art. The supplies needed for this project include an 8x10 canvas, Sharpie, Bahama blue acrylic paint, white acrylic paint, warm sunset acrylic paint. So what I did first, I drew the figure on paper first. That way I could determine the size that I needed to trace on the canvas. So after drawing it on the paper, I carefully cut the outline out and traced it on the canvas with a pencil. That way I could erase any mistakes I made before I traced the pencil line with a black Sharpie. So after tracing with a black Sharpie, I filled in all of the areas that were supposed to be painted black. Then it was time for me to fill in the color of the garments. I painted the top, which I will call the tunic, a warm sunset. So if you notice that part of it is darker than the other, and that's the way it was intended to be. I added water to make sure that there were some variations in the color. So like the front part is lighter and the back part is darker. And the skirt is white with Bahama blue on the front part of the skirt and a little bit at the bottom of the skirt. And then there is a band of black around the tunic that completes the look. Now, if I had to do it over, I would possibly paint it on as watercolor or if I had the right type of fabric, I, I would have painted it on that. And I think I, you could either use watercolor or you can use acrylic paint that's watered down. So now on to the next project. It is a bracelet that is made from glass beads from Ghana. It's called Only at Joanne, and it is celebrating Black History Month one together. The rich history of the beads date back to the ancient times when they were first used as the king's currency. And this was used for the exchange of slaves, textiles, and alcohol. Later on, they became popular in the ancient coming-of-age rituals for girls. The modern-day woman, both African and non-African, is rediscovering the beauty of these Ghanaian beads, which are growing in popularity today. The supplies needed for this project include one package of yellow black and red beads, and these are only at Joanne Fabrics. Seven black beads, eight tiny black beads, seven millimeter stretch magic, 
one square bead. So this is a fairly easy project. Uh, all you need to do is thread it onto the Stretch Magic. So I threaded a donut shaped bead followed by a tiny black bead, then a donut shaped, a large black bead, then another donut shaped bead, and so on and so on until I came to the end. When I decided how large I wanted it, to, you know, to fit around a wrist like mine, and I have a very small wrist, I placed a large square bead on the end and I knotted it. So I knotted it about three times. Now I have since watched some beading on YouTube and they suggest a different type of stretch material that will not break. And I can take this apart and do that, you know, maybe at a later time. And last, I made a fabric necklace from fabric that I purchased at Joann's. And I had paper covered wire and it had some green leaves around it. And I had purchased that from the Dollar Tree. And I took the leaves off and I used that for my tablescape. But I had this paper covered wire left. So I used that and I was able to make two projects from it. You will see next week, I will make my second project from that. But with this, I took the fabric, I folded it. I, in fact, I sewed it on my machine, then made a tube. I threaded it through there and sealed it with hot glue and another piece of fabric. You can slip it over your head, it is done. You can also put some beads on there, which I may do. So, if you have liked what you've seen, please subscribe, like, save, and comment if you so choose. I appreciate all of your comments. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. See you later.